Hey, what's up my beautiful people, Diavolo here, and in today's video we're going to go over my thoughts on Hana Kurusu and what I think her plan and the Jujutsu Kaisen story may be. But before we get into all of that, remember to subscribe if you're new around here and leave a like if you enjoy my content, as it really helps out with the algorithm. So one of the two new players revealed in the last two chapters was the stunning Hana Kurusu, who goes by the name Angel. Hana is a young girl with light coloured eyes and short hair with bangs that curve inward. She wears a large turtleneck sweater, dark pants and heeled ankle boots. She also appears to have a halo above her head and a pair of wings on her back. She's confirmed to be a sorcerer from 1000 years ago which somewhat confirms the idea of her being around during the Heian era or the golden age of Jujutsu sorcery and we know that her ability is to extinguish people's curse techniques and I've been thinking about this so it says in the official translation that she's a sorcerer from 1000 years ago not necessarily 1000 years or older and we know that Kenjaku has been trying to form this plan for at least the past 1000 years and in my theory about Kenjaku I show the symbolism between Kenjaku and his similarities with the god of mercy, Kenon, who was also known by the name Fuku Kenjaku. Now in Judo Christianity, there is an angel who is often known by the name Asriel, who is tasked by God to separate the souls of mortal men from their bodies, and he does not personally know the names of anyone until a leaf falls from the tree underneath God's throne bearing the person's name. Asriel was one of God's most loyal angels because before the creation of man, Asriel proved to be the only angel brave enough to go down to earth and face the hordes of Elbus, in order to bring God the materials needed to make man. For this service he was made the angel of death and given the register of all mankind. He was the strongest of the four archangels which also consisted of Jibril, Mikal and Israfil. Now in my theory here I think that Kenjaku has taken the position of the god with his four archangels, two of which we could have possibly even been shown so far in the series. One being Hana taking the place of Azrael as the angel of death and the Shikigami Kogain that each player receives which acts as an intermediary or interface between the game master and each player is kind of related to the second and Archangel Jibril, the Archangel who acts as an intermediary between God and the humans as a bearer of revelations to the prophets. For the third and fourth possible Archangel we still haven't had any characters that could possibly fit these positions yet. Uh, one could possibly be the guy that uh, sticks with Ghetto, I just can't remember his name right now, this is like a off script little add-in. Although Hannah does carry a trumpet of some sort that looks somewhat similar and could be related to the trumpet of the fourth archangel, Israfil, who blows the trumpet from the Holy Rock of Jerusalem to announce the day of resurrection. Another thing I was thinking about in relation to Hannah being the angel of death is the thought that Azrael, after the leaf falls from the tree, he must then separate the body and soul after 40 days. Kind of like those who are marked as part of the culling game have a total of 19 days to enter the barrier, otherwise they're subject to CT removal, which ends up resulting in death because as we found out in chapter 146 by the Tengen, anyone whose curse techniques that are removed from them will die. But this thought goes off the idea that it isn't some kind of binding vow placed upon anyone marked by Kenjaku's technique. It goes off the idea that Kenjaku sends out Hanakurusu to remove the curse techniques of a player resulting in their death. I think this could also leave some leadway for Yuji and Megami in their role with protecting Sukumi. Like as instead of her immediately dying, Hana is sent after Sukumi and tries to take away her ability but say while well, this is going on, Yuta makes a rule after collecting enough points so that Hana Kurusu must use her technique on the factor of the prison realm resulting in Gojo being freed. But this necessarily wouldn't stop her from attacking immediately after this is done and this is just a completely vague and random idea I came up with after thinking up this theory. Also before I wrap this up, I just wanted to point out something that I saw Broku point out in his video on Hana Kurusu. During chapter 145 we got moments that seemed to symbolise some kind of fate being broken and as we know with Toji now, he broke the fate that connected Kenjaku, the Tengen and the Six Eyes when he received his gifted heavenly resurrection which completely nullified or cursed energy that Toji possessed. This relates to Azriel with how he is said to hold a scroll concerning the fate of mortals. I think that the idea of fate and its prevalence in the series is going to be brought to the forefront throughout this final arc. The fate that Yuji was sentenced to at the beginning of the series will be faced along with finding out the fates of many people like Nabara that we still aren't 100% sure of. Anyway, this is all I could think of at the time and I'd love to hear what you all think so make sure to leave a comment down below with what your predictions are for uh, Hana Kurusu and the up and coming chapters. Also remember to leave a like if you've enjoyed my video and subscribe to become a part of Jujutsu High and uh, keep up to date with the latest JJK news. But for now it's been your professional degenerate Diavolo and I'll see you guys in a bit. Bye.